Hello folks, welcome back to part 2 of our video on the track dumper, the Slane track, Slane HD 1000. So as you can see, ground conditions where we are at the moment are quite uh, quite tough. We're in probably the wettest part of the year when really we shouldn't be working in these conditions. But it's probably a good test to this machine to put it through its proper paces and see what it's capable of doing. As you can see we've created some humps and hollows and low spots to travel through. So let's have a quick look at the machine and what we must do before we operate a machine like this. So as I've said in the part one of the video, the machine comes with safety uh, aspects and things we should always do. It does say we should wear ear protection. For the purpose of this video I'm not going to wear it because I'm wearing a GoPro camera to get some close ups of the machine and how it functions. So the first thing I always train up everybody to do and in my staff is to do a walk around check of the machine so first thing you must do check the tracks make sure there's no objects like sticks or stones or bits of bars running stuck into the tracks that they're still sitting in the proper position that they ought to be in check around to make sure that nothing has been tampered with with the machine since last used all the cables guards are all in place obviously you need to check your engine for engine oil make sure it's up to the required level fill your engine up or your tank up with fuel and then a visual check in around the, the engine bay to make sure there's no oil leaks from hydraulics etc etc and again check this side here to make sure the tracks are all okay now the one thing i always say to uh, people any kind of motorized vehicle has an engine and an engine to run properly must have lubrication. So in the form of a two-stroke engine, the oil will be mixed with the petrol, but in the form of a four-stroke engine, which will be on something like this, or a mini excavator, or larger machines, it will have oil, an oil sump that lubricates the engine. So the first thing we always must do is start the engine up, let it warm up before you put it into a workload position. So in this case now, we're gonna start up the machine. Hopefully it won't get too noisy, so just bear with me while we go through this we we'll get onto the machine then we we'll go through the functions of the controls again just to show you a little bit about them and we'll we'll just try and see can we get around this site as you can see here it's filling up with water and um, as i say ground conditions are very very tough but i'm hoping this machine can cope with this it has done in the past so we come around here and as with all honda petrol engines you're going to have a choke on the machine so you pull on your choke and then you fire up the engine turn off the choke okay leave the machine so as i've said just move away from the machine slightly you give it a couple of seconds maybe a minute just for the engine to warm up so that it's not cold the oil lubricating can get through all the engine components inside if it's a pump system it might take a couple of seconds for that oil to get up there let the engine get up to temperature so that it's it's not going to be laboring and struggling and uh, doing un unnecessary wear to that so again what I've said back early in the first part of the video, we've got a tread plate on the back of the machine, or a ride plate. There's times during this video I'll have to get off the machine, there's times I'll get back on, so when I'm going over humps and hollows, I may decide I'll have to just get off of those, those areas, just to uh, help the machine up along, and again to keep the balance of the machine correct. I'll do a run through the course loaded, and a run through the course unloaded, where you will see stability needing to be a little more important and we'll also look at the feature where you have to step off to tip out the load. So, I hope all the cameras and functions are working here now. So, we'll increase the revs of the machine, as you can see, the hand throttle is here. So we'll increase the revs on the machine to get everything flow, get the hydraulic flow up to the required level. So as you can see here, the two joysticks. So again, grab on the rail, two levers backwards to go in a backwards fashion. Two levers forward to go straight forward, and if we want to turn to the left or turn to the right, we can do so in reverse or in forward, okay? So let's ho I hope you can all hear that. So again, just on the functions. So we rev it up, we'll give it a run through the course, and we'll have a look at the tipping function and all that there in a second. So rev the machine up, and away we go. You can see 
speed traction what isn't exactly the best but the machine has caught over it quite well we come up here to a better part of ground so see how she calls it this here pretty well we go over this hump here now just to see how it falls in the up and, up and down hill section all that was seen there. The next part of the video we're going to look at where the tipping function works. So as I said in previous video we've got two control levers so they've controlled the tracks as we've said so it'll increase the revs a little bit but the left hand lever will operate the high tip. So as you can see we've high tipped up the bucket or the skip raised it up. We let that back down again. The second function on the right hand side lever is for raising the dump lever. Now, if I step back on to the tread plate, that function won't work because I have deactivated that by been on the switch. So it won't tip. Come back off again and it tips. Okay? So we'll make our way across the side again, we'll offload the skip and we'll give it a run through in its empty position. Okay? One of the things you might notice there on the machine as well is it's not advisable to drive around the site in the high tip position you should only raise up the skip when you're going up to the tip into a skip loader or into the back of a, um, a truck or over a wall you should not move around the site in a fully tipped up position it's just too dangerous so we'll give it a go again here now as you'll see from my viewing point you can make Perfect, uh, you have a perfect view of all corners of the machine. So now you can see it's climbing up onto a bit of a hill. Now I'm just trying to get a bit of a view. Remember we spoke about in part one of the width or the length of those tracks, which makes the machine very stable. This is where the stepping off the tread plate becomes very important. As I tip this load now, the center of gravity has now moved a much further forward position and that will mean that as this box tips the weight is transferred very far forward and if I was standing on the back of the machine here and this machine catapulted it wouldn't be such a good thing so as you can see give the skip a little bit of a helping hand on load very wet sticky material there we go back away from the load and down the skip little part of operating the machine I also recommend that you leave the engine in an idle position for again 30-40 seconds for the engine to idle back down for all the moving parts to slow back down to an idle position before you turn off the engine again allowing lubrication of the engine to be maximized until the engine has calmed down to an idle position 
again cutting out premature wear of that engine so we turn off so again we can have a look through the tipping mechanism which I didn't show in part one and you can see where we have a safety strut here to go over the ram mechanism so when we're getting in here to do some greasing again we'll walk through the site here and you can see how tough the conditions were it's very very sloppy as you can see water build up in the middle of the uh, low zone and again here we try to replicate side slopes and you can see that the machine has tracked down somewhere in the region of you know maybe four or five inches over here maybe six seven inches in depth into the soil and at no point as you can see loaded or unloaded did I have to stop and back the machine out of a, a situation where I was getting stuck it always made traction and made made a forward motion again if you look inside of the undercarriage you can see the build up of soil I mean that is as tough a conditions as you're ever going to see that machine operating in so I hope this video has given you an insight into the features spec on this machine here and I hope that the video has also helped in some way to make a decision on purchasing a machine like this a little bit easier for you. If it has, please give me a like, hit the thumbs up button there, it will be very nice to show your appreciation on that. Can you please subscribe to our channel and also ring the little bell and that will notify you as to when the next videos are coming up. Thank you very much for your time for watching this video, hope you've enjoyed it, look forward to talking to you soon. Take care, bye bye.